So once again, I was fairly happy with my progress, so I just decided to jump straight into battling. So I soon had an opponent. I looked at his team. I saw these two. I also saw this, and that, oh yeah, and that. My reaction at the time was And then by the end of the match it was basically Good lord, that strategy takes no skill to use. It's actually pretty infuriating just thinking about it. Anyways, after that awful start, I quickly jumped back into the fray. I soon had another battle, and my next opponent's team looked much more manageable. I was pretty confident that nothing on his team could really do that much damage to me. The only thing on his team that looked to be a slight problem was his wheezing, as none of my team could hit it super effectively, and so therefore I knew I'd just have to wear it down rather than just flat out killing it. This match was fairly simple and I had the upper hand throughout the majority of it. The only Pokemon on his team that actually did give me trouble was Torterra, as it annoyingly kept taking hits much better than I thought it would. However, I was eventually able to toxic stall it down, and then Zangus was easily able to clean up the remnants of his team. My next opponent's team looked a bit odd and I didn't really understand how it was going to work. That was until I noticed the Ninjask, which I then noticed was going to be the obvious baton passer for the team. Although it was fairly obvious that the only thing he would be able to beneficially pass to would be his Kingler, as that's the only thing that benefited from Ninjas attack boost. Because I knew he'd be a baton pass based team, I'd have to adjust my normal strategy accordingly in order to deal with it. Luckily his Ninjas didn't manage to get off many boosts, meaning that none of his team became threatening. His Kingler was easily stopped by Alamomola, and the rest of his team were handled by mine without much trouble. I initially thought his Palippa might be annoying due to its powerful stabs, but he must have been running some sort of odd spread on it due to its substantial lack of power and easy death at the paws of Skuntank, who was able to easily win me the game. In the next match, I was pretty confident that if I set rocks up, I could win as he had three things weak to them, and the majority of his Pokemon I was sure could be finished off by Primate once they'd all been weakened down. So, obviously, the game plan from turn 1 was to get up rocks as quickly as possible, and so therefore I led off with Primeape in order to U-turn to Golurk, who could easily... <laughs> well, shit. That was game plan 1 gone. Luckily, I still have Primeape, who is effortlessly able to revenge kill... <laughs> God damn it, Primeape, why are you so bad? Anyways, the next team I was up against did look seriously... Dangerous. Mainly because of these three as I knew they could all hit very hard and be extremely difficult to wall and furthermore take down. This was even more the case when it turned out his Articuno was offensive subroost, which actually really managed to do some serious damage to my team just because of the sheer power of Hurricane. It was in on first turn and managed to KO two of my Pokemon and critically wound two others, so it seemed for a while that I'd lost just from that. However, after it got threatened out, his team didn't pose as much of an offensive presence as I thought, and I was able to carefully play my way around his team without much trouble, and even through dual screens, Articuno was mauled by a stone edge. And eventually, Primate managed to redeem himself by killing both that and Seismitoned, meaning he only had Mushana left for my scum tank, and so therefore it's obvious how that matchup went. In the next game, Shinies only. <laughs> Get wrecked! Body bag. Are we done here? Okay, good. Next match. My next opponent basically had everything that was a bloody nightmare. The Jinx, Mandibuzz, Golurk, and Garboda I knew were all going to be extremely annoying without a doubt. Unfortunately, my own Golurk died very quickly, and his Golurk also seemed to be running max speed with a life orb, which was unorthodox and very annoying as that meant he'd probably run the speed tie. Oh well, from there it meant Skuntank could come in in Pursuit Trap, because who would leave in Golurk in this situation when the Sucker Punch is so super obvious? I mean, who in their right mind would just make the risky play?
Oh, I hate this game. You get people like this dickhead who don't even know what a prediction is, and immediately after you get people like this who actually know how to play the game. It's jarring and annoying because I never know how to play because I don't want to risk over predicting, but I know at the same time that could lead me to under predict, just like in this situation right here. It's especially a problem in this tier because I bloody suck at it, and it just makes things that much harder. That's when I decided that in NU, I'm now aiming for the top 500, because I know for a fact that I'll never even be able to get close to the top 100. With this knowledge now in mind, I set back out to find a match, and I actually found one quickly. My opponent's team did look fairly solid, but it once again lacked an obvious special wall. The only thing I could think of was his camera opt, but that thing really does suck defensively, and should never really be used as a dedicated wall in my opinion. I was also aware that Driftblim could be annoying, as with an unburdened boost it could wreck some serious house. However, as long as Alamomola was alive, it wouldn't really be a problem, as it lacks raw hitting power and is mostly better for late game cleaning. Luckily, my opponent didn't use Driftblim to its fullest potential at all, as it wasted its flying gem very early into the match, and was therefore easily toxic stalled out by Alamomola. And, after his Samurott died, he seemingly had nothing that could do anything to my wall core, and so therefore he was just forced to forfeit. And, looking at my points, I am now at 1693. So overall, this episode, I have made disappointingly low amounts of progress. However, I am not far away from the number 500 spot, as that only requires 76 more points. So hopefully, I should be there soon. And that is going to conclude today's episode. It is a shame that I've had to change plans like this, but I'm simply not going to ever get out of venue otherwise, as it is a tier that I find incredibly tough when compared to others. I hope I will retain all of your support through this, as it is you wonderful people who always keep me motivated. And with that, I must bid you all farewell, so thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all very soon.